G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Explore Built, brought to you by Off-Road Pros. We are working on stage two of the mighty Luxy build. And I tell you what, this episode, we get some really cool modifications done to the vehicle and we head away on a little overnight camping trip, just about to sneak through the creek right now. So let's rip in. Let's go, we're back guys. Last year we bought the mighty N80 Hilux with the intention of showing you guys that you don't need to spend two, three, four hundred thousand dollars to get a quality Australian touring vehicle. So last time you seen us, we were putting together stage one. If you haven't checked that out, make sure you go watch that video first. Stage one guys was your weekend warrior. It's where you spend that first little bit of budget that you might have on your full wheel drive. We've put a full bush wraps kit on this car. We got the BF Goodrich all trains on there. We got the ROHs guys, and we put the two inch Dobinson suspension lift in. Last episode, we went out, we did a little bit of testing. We found a couple of flaws, a couple of areas that we think need improving. So we're gonna rip into stage two. Let's see what's involved. We went through all your comments, we've gone through the feedback, uh, plus what we've learned over the years, and it keeps coming back to sort of safety, taking it from the weekend warrior to that next level where you're on these slightly longer trips, you need a little bit more protection, you might want lighting for those night drives. This episode is really gonna be sort of that peace of mind for these bigger touring trips. So enough talking about it, we're back at EC Off-Road guys, uh, we've got parts being delivered, so the boys are gonna chuck it up on the hoist, and we're gonna rip straight into it, Let's go. We've left EC off road and I tell you what, we've done quite a few little things. We've completely changed the look of this vehicle. Could not be happier actually. So from here, we're on our way up to the Bush Company where we're gonna run you through the modifications that we've just done down at EC. And we're also, we're gonna sort out a little bit of storage. So this is a um, pretty major part. We weren't 100% sure what direction to take here, but we'll find out in a minute. All right guys, we've made it. We're up here at the Bush Company. Now I know what you're thinking. Rooftop tents, awnings. Well, you're gonna have to wait and see, but there's definitely a few other products that the Bush Company offers that you might not know about. Now, when we've come down the street here, you've been given a sneak peek of the front end. So, I'm gonna grab Dino. We're gonna run you through exactly what we've done on the front end of the Explore Luxie. Mate, hey, mate. everyone knows you do the rooftop tents, the awnings, yep. that's what the Bush Company's renowned for and famous for and been doing it for, what, 15? 20 Plus years. 20 years now. Yeah. So look, there's a couple of other products that you guys might not know that Dino does. So the car has been down at EC Off-Road. The team have been absolutely pumping it out uh, while we've been away filming. But Dino, why don't you let them in on a little secret about some of the other products? Right, so one of the ranges that we do is the Onka Bull Bar range. Yep. Um, also, the side steps and so on that can go with it. Yep. But effectively, like we have on the front yet, this is a South African made Onka Bull Bar. And how good oh, does it look? Mate, super sporty, makes it fun and really look aggressive. The pro changles are absolutely insane. It, it tucks up nice and yeah. neat. Good protection around the lights, guys. Yeah. And of course, you can fit all your accessories, which we'll run through in a second. Yeah. But I tell you what, I really wanted to put a bar on the front of this vehicle that was different. There's thousands, tens of thousands of Luxes running around with bull bars, ARB, Rival, x Roxes, all the usual ones. Mm. And we wanted something that's gonna stand apart. And mate, I reckon it's one of the tidiest, if not the tidiest bull bar I've seen on the front of a Lux. There is not a lot in the country. If you are chasing one guys, or you wanna check them out, jump over to the Bush Company site yeah. um, and have a look. But let's run through some of the features if yeah. you want. Let's, let's go. So, straight off the bat guys, spotties. These are a massive spotty too. Fit with ease, you've got nice clearance, mm -hmm. which is important for your spotties. Yeah. So, we are running the brand new Light Force. I'm gonna touch more on them in a minute. Then, yeah. 
winch compatible, Dino? Yeah, absolutely. So you've got your winch compatibility there. Also, a large front end allowing good airflow still. You're not really restricting your airflow, even with spotlights there. Massive lights, and yeah, you still yeah. got plenty of airflow. So the, the reason approach. we decided to swap bars in the first place, guys, is because the, the bull bar that we had on here wasn't winch compatible. Now we can run the winch. It looks about 15,000 times better as well. Yeah. Now, there's a sneaky little feature with this bar underneath. You want to give us a quick look at that? Absolutely. So on the front of all of the Anka bull bars, so that's for the 70s or for these, you've actually got a front hitch receiver. So if you've got like a boat or a caravan, something you want to push around the yard and you really just need to get those tight corners, you can simply insert a long hitch receiver like that, pin it off. That's a very cool feature. We also have these round recovery um, high lift jack point receivers. So if you are running a high lift jack with a pivoting section, it's not going to put the jack under tension when you're jacking up one side. Yep. So that's going to keep the jack nice and level. I also love that it's got the little spotties in the corner too. Yeah, a little integrated. So that just plugs into your standard uh, fog fog lights on the dash, so when you're running your fog beams. Yep. So you've got the two little spotlights now. Those you can either get in a spreader format or in a spot. So epic. Yeah. Also, three mounts up on top here, which is mm. pretty much unheard of. So you could literally run two extra spotties straight up yeah. on top and your aerial mount, or you can run multiple aerials. Absolutely. We will get to UHF in a minute. It's definitely something that we wanted to incorporate in this build, so that'll be coming at some point. Yeah. Mate, I'm stoked with it. I reckon it looks unreal, and I reckon there's gonna be a lot of people uh, chasing down these bull bars. So yeah. if you got yourself a Luxie, jump over, yeah. check them out. So I wanna clarify a couple of things too, because I've got a lot of comments going, this is not a budget build. It is a budget of under a hundred grand. <laughs> budget doesn't mean cheap, guys. Budget doesn't mean I gotta build a car for 10 grand. I could have a budget of 300 grand. The goal with this vehicle is to build a quality tourer with quality products for under a hundred grand. Now, I'm hoping to be a long way under that hundred grand. We're actually aiming for probably around that 70K mark. So yes, we could have kept the bull bar we had because I'm sure the comments are already flowing through. Yes, we could have kept the old spotlights. There's a few things that we could have done, but the, the goal here one, we wanted a winch compatible bull bar, which is the reason for the upgrade. And two guys is we're swapping things out to step it up to a high level of quality. All the Explore Life vehicles are built with the best touring products that I can get my hands on in Australia. Pretty lucky that we've built up sponsors over the past six years uh, that really are industry leaders, guys, and I truly do put my name to all these products on the vehicle. So, the other thing we had on the old bull bar, guys, was spotties. They were a cheap old set of spotties. One of the first things that tends to happen with the water crossings and bits and pieces like that is your spotties fill up with water on those cheaper ones. Huge shout out to the team at Light Force. We had these couple of weeks before they were released. Now, not only do they look good guys uh, and made in Australia, but these are actually a step down price point wise from the HTX2s that we were running on the Ram over in America and we had them on the 79. So if you're looking for a quality set of spotties, that actually are at a reasonably good price point. Make sure you go and check these out. Couple of quick features. Uh, the main one, guys, is not only do they have the Epic waterproof rating, but they have three modes. So you can flick in cab, full flood, full spot, or beast mode, where you can have the best of both worlds. So really cool feature. I think it's something that we will use extremely often uh, on those longer touring trips. Now look, we upgraded the bar, guys, so that we could run a winch. We haven't mucked around. If you guys haven't heard, we're giving this vehicle to one of you. This is gonna be a giveaway, guys. So the Onka bull bar allows you to actually run a, quite a large winch. Some of the bull bars, you're limited with winch sizing. We've gone the 12,000 pound carbon. We've got the black synthetic rope and we've got the uh, red carbon hook up on front, which actually looks really tidy. Stage one was sort of weekend, you can get off-road a little bit. Stage two, now we're really starting to build it up so you can do some of those longer touring trips. Speaking of protection, you got the uh, Onka bull bar protection coming all the way down to here. Then you kind of want to make sure the rest is protected, guys. Underbody protection is super, super cheap insurance. You're talking under 500 bucks um, and you can start protecting the front end of your four-wheel drive. We've got the Brown Davis bash plate underneath. First thing it does is protect your radiator. Uh, then 
we've actually gone with all of the plates. So you've basically got this full skid pan, which just gives you that peace of mind knowing if you've got to roll over a rock or you're coming up over a tree stump, you are protected. Uh, it is a steel, three mil steel bash plate, guys. So heavy duty is a bit of an understatement. We're now protected from the radiator all the way through to the transfer case. It's cheap insurance, Brown Davis, they do them for just about every model. It's worth having, 100%. There's a couple of other things that have been done that I don't even think you guys have noticed. One of them's on the back, which I'm gonna tell you about in a minute. The other one's on the front. Not only have we done the brand new bull bar, guys, we've actually done a full facelift. So it is a 2016 SR. We've gone and installed 2020 and up SR5 lights and grill. The reason we've done that, a little bit of a facelift, makes it look like the brand new Luxes too. These bull bars are for 2020 and up only. So that pretty much ties in the whole front end. The only thing we're missing is Mr. Ariel. Now, as we're doing this build, guys, like I said, you can sort of save a little bit of dollars here and there. You can do things at different stages. Um, we haven't gone the UHF just yet. It definitely will come. Uh, to start with, you can run a handheld to get you out of trouble, save a couple of bucks. Now, as you're building your own vehicles at home, you can sort of pick and choose, depending on the touring and weekend trips that you're doing, what you might add as part of your stage two. Spotties, if you don't do a lot of night driving, you can save a couple of bucks and uh, not run the body straight away. If you're not doing anything too serious and it's just a little beach runner, a winch might not be for you guys. If you're running up to little beach trips, DI, island trips, you don't necessarily need a winch. There's people everywhere. Max Tracks will get you out of about 95% of situations. So we've got a UHF to go and then the front end is pretty much complete. Let me know in the comments, what's your thoughts on the Onca bar? What's your thoughts? on the light force spotties. I wanna know, I, I'm unbiasedly truly reckon this is a shit hot front end. So let us know in the comments. Maybe just give, give us an out of 10 rating on the front end of this car. All right, we're getting a little bit more serious. We're at the back end of the vehicle, guys. Some of you didn't even pick up on this in the video. I was waiting for the comments, it didn't come. I think one bloke was all over it. The SR tub is in the bin. That's something we didn't even talk about. We snuck that through without telling you. So guys, couple of reasons for this. It's gonna make a lot of sense very shortly, but we wanted to give this vehicle that SR5 look. Uh, once again, this is something that if you are working to a, to a close budget, you're not necessarily gonna to wanna to do. But like I said, it's gonna make a lot of sense uh, very shortly. So we got the SR5 look guys. We've wrapped a line the back just to really clean it up, tidy it up. The black looks epic. Um, it all sort of come about because we were sorting some stuff out with uh, Ballina Smash Repairs. They had one there. Um, it was cheap. It was a bit of a no-brainer. You're probably thinking if I've put a new tub on it, it means it's not going in the bin. And you'd be 100% correct. So we've always shown you the tray canopy setup. We run the GCI tray canopies. It is Epic. It is one of my favorite ways to tour, but with this build, we thought we'd try something a little bit different and show you guys another option. So tub life it is guys, obviously a couple of reasons. Keeping that cost down, it can be very costly to do a full tray canopy setup. I do think it is probably the optimum way to go, but everyone has different needs, different touring setups. As soon as you're heading away with the tub, guys, first thing you notice, you throw your swag, you throw some camping gear in the back, gets covered in dust. If it rains, you're in absolute all sorts. So we wanted to have some sort of storage solution. So what else can we put on the back of a tub? So the SR tub, guys, we got rid of that. It's, it's a little bit ugly, let's be honest. Uh, it's got all the lugs down the side. It doesn't look as clean and as neat as the SR5 tub. Also, on the back tailgate, you've got one latch to drop down instead of doing two annoying latches. So, when you're looking at things to put on top of your tub, you can have your tourner cover, nice and easy. You could go to a hard tourner cover. You could go to a rack. A lot of people love a tub rack with the rooftop tent up here. Um, it, it does still allow a heap of water ingress and it's not great for storage in my, in my personal opinion. Then we can go to a canopy, guys. Now, there's a few different models of canopy. You can build out a frame with your canvas like they used to back in the old days. Still get a lot of dust ingress. I do think it looks pretty cool. I did toy with the idea of doing a canvas on the back here, but it's not terribly practical. So sort of two options, three options when you're choosing a canopy. Your canvas, that one's out. 
you got your fiberglass, and then we've got option three. This is where Dino comes in. The other product that they <laughs> probably don't know you do. Yeah. Run, us, run us through it. What do we got? Right, so Rhino Man Canopies. Rhino Man is it's basically South Africa's major aluminium canopy manufacturer. Yep. Um, they do the most out of any aluminium canopy worldwide. Yep. Huge amounts and probably sitting between the 550 to 700 a month. Yeah, right. So yeah, they Toyota approved, Asusa approved and so on. So we've been importing these guys since 2015 into Australia. This is the new um, Expedition range. Yeah. And the big thing is it's a fully welded aluminium or alloy canopy. So there's yeah. two different options really when you're choosing a canopy. And uh, it just so happens that Dan just had a customer in with a fiberglass yeah. canopy and he's just ripped it off and they just put one of these on. So we'll just run you through other than it looking hot, run you through a few differences yeah. as to why we have gone the Rhino Man and uh, why you might choose to throw one of these on the back of your tub. Yeah, so for a tub fitment, guys, um, obviously you get your canvas canopies, you get your fiberglass range as well. Yeah. There's pros and cons, all right? So the cons say to having one of these on is you don't always get the exact shaping that you can get out of fiberglass. Fiberglass, like a boat, you can mold it better. So if you have a look at this one, you've obviously got a big curved front end on a fiberglass canopy. So you do get to mold in different sizes and shapes. The other thing is you do get different like nice little window insert options and so on, which can make it look a bit fancier and probably taper the back down. Yeah. So for your, I wouldn't say aerodynamics, but for your real sporty look, fiberglass canopies do a great thing. We're not going no. for sporty. No. And the one <laughs> biggest thing is that we're trying to really focus on is practicality. So yeah. the main reason why we have fiberglasses come in for exchange, or the main reason why our customers like going with the alloy ones is because of load carrying capacities or capabilities. Yeah. So, you know, realistically 250 kgs dynamic load rate on these. So if you're going to be loading roof racks, tents, a boat loaders, you know, tinny loaders, that type of thing, a canopy like this with a fully welded alloy construction is as good, you know, for a tub, it's gonna do the job, absolutely. And so guys, the, the other reason, you know, that we want that load capacity is so you can put all your tents, yep. awnings, all the accessories on the top. You don't have this meter and a half on the back of your vehicle of just complete and utter wasted space. Yeah. And when we're talking about touring and we're talking about wanting to take things away, yep. your rooftop tents, shovels, Whatever you want to load on top of a roof, can go for it. no dead yeah. space. And when it comes to yeah. heading touring, you, you always need more space, yeah. no matter what. And we find a lot of tradies go the shoot as well. Yeah. So you can put a roof rack on it, you can load your timber, your plumbing goods, your step ladders. So it's definitely a tradesman canopy. The nice thing with having it slightly square as well, so you're coming square at the back, you get a lot more carrying capacity on the inside of these. Not just that, but the side doors. Ma much bigger. Huge. First so, thing I noticed. So the one thing is, we don't refer to this as a window. It's literally, you can use it as a side door. And we'll, we'll sneak outside in a minute. We might head out there now, just to show you a few different options with the Rhino Man doors and, yeah. and storage solutions. So we are gonna get this thing ready to go on, but let's go have a quick look. Let's go take a squiz. Straight away, you can see, you know, when you do put the roof rack up on top, it allows you to put your awnings and bits and pieces. Absolutely. But I reckon it looks unreal for a start. So you get the nice yeah. glass panel on the back. Yeah, so they all come standard with the glass panel. Yeah. Um, we've got an optional two variants. We've got the Extreme and the Expedition. Expedition's what it's like, it's touring, it's a bit more rugged. Um, it's got the solid sides. Yeah. Like what we're fitting on the Luxie. Correct. And then we do have the glass with integrated glass sliding window in. So if you've got pets and so on, you can actually take on this. And this is what we call the Extreme Canopy. But take a look at this. This is the one big benefit. There are extruded mounting rails on the inside of our canopies. Um, what that allows you to do is attach some cool accessories. Yeah. So this is what we call our utility shelf. So giving you full access side shelf for storage. Um, we've actually got also our integrated molly panel kits on there. So if you are running those molly panel first aid kits, uh, little storage bags, whatever. Fully customize the yeah. inside of your vehicle to suit your touring needs. Yeah. This is so handy to be able to access the side of your vehicle and have the gear that you need on the run right here. Dino's got the nicest touring setup with a tub canopy Land Cruiser in Australia. Uh, it is absolutely wild what you've yeah. managed to fit inside a yeah. tub 
canopy setup. Yeah, a lot of guys go straight off a touring, go flat tray, and yeah. there's nothing wrong with that, and they do have their advantages and disadvantages. But for a price point as well, yep. going with a tub style canopy, um, you know, you're looking at getting into any of these from five grand. Well, yeah. let's get one let's on the get back, one of, on the the back of the Luxe. Because yeah. I reckon it's going to look up. Yeah. We've got the black bar, black decal, yeah. black canopy on the back. Let's go. Cool feature about these Canopy 2 guys, they literally take out some of the factory tie-down mounts, Hiluxes, Rangers, Navaras, don't have to drill any holes. So most of the models, it'll go straight on and use all factory mounting holes, which is pretty bloody cool. Yeah, baby. Mate, how good does it look? I am so stoked. So, canopy's on. Absolutely, yeah. Awning's on. Yep. Don't know how hard you've looked at the awning, guys, but we've got a little bit of a surprise. Yeah. Limited edition, Explore Life awning by the Bush Company. Yeah. This is something we've spoke about for years. It's gonna be good. And I finally yeah. got it done. You're gonna have to wait and see exactly what we've done here. Yeah. But uh, we weren't even planning on doing an awning. Me and Dino had been talking about this for a while and it just so happened that while we we're here at the Bush Company, it arrived. A good quality awning, you'll put out 10 times more than a shitty awning. I'm telling you that for fact. This thing's so simple, easy to use and strong. I'll run you through all the features when we're out camping. Super easy to fit up too, I was surprised. Yeah, so the nice thing is uh, the canopies fit directly onto the factory mounting points. Yeah. So it's not only the strongest place to mount them, it's also super secure. Yep. Um, we have fitted a set of our heavy duty stainless steel load bars to the top. So you're able to run your timber, surfboards, surfboards, whatever. They, yeah, ready to, to carry the weight. So not only have we got bulk storage now, everything can stay dry, dust yeah. free, yeah. huge amount of storage plus the load bars up on top. Yeah. This is as practical as you get. We haven't had to go a whole new tray canopy setup. Mate, I'm stoked. It's a good platform to start with, eh? Legend. Yeah, awesome. If you want to check them out, guys, they're on thebushcompany.com.au. I reckon we're going to get out and test this thing. So we're out of here. I reckon we're going to go for a night's camping, try out some of the new features, have a beer around the bush tally, and figure out what's next. Sounds good. Cheers, Dana. Cheers, mate. Hope you're enjoying the episode, guys. The Luxy is really coming along. Now, you're gonna have to wait till the next build episode because we've got a few extra goodies going in the back. Now, by now, you would have known we are giving away the Hilux with the new giveaway platform. Now, it's a, about two months away. However, this month, guys, we do have the ultimate toy hauler giveaway. Now, we've got the brand new double off-road jet ski trailer here, but a few of you guys have been asking that why didn't you get the Thundercat up on top? So, you guys get to choose. This month, you can either have my toy hauler with the Thundercat and the skis, or you can have the brand newies. The choice is yours, guys. Plus, we're really making this platform an opportunity for you to grab some good discounts, buy some exclusive merch, and a bonus is everyone is in the draw every single month to win some wild prizes. Now, if you don't wanna set yourself up for a monthly payment, guys, every item on the website is still gonna be an entry. So you can grab yourself a set of 20 buck pluggers, short shirt and hat, whatever you want it to be. Shout out to everyone that is supporting us, guys. We really do appreciate it. Back to the Hilux build. Oh, and we're on the road. Been driving for a little while, to be honest. Just a sneaky overnighter. I've thrown the swag in. I've got the, uh, the ice box in the back there. We've got the Red Arc Go Block, just so I can charge my phone, and a couple of little bits of camera gear. So I don't have a proper dual battery system, so I'm kind of cheating a little bit. I am running out of light, so fingers crossed. Should be able to pull up, get this awning out, give you a little bit of a look. We'll have a chat about um, stage two, and then just gonna have a cold beer, sit there and look at the car, and uh, I'll come up with a few concepts for uh, stage three. I think we're nearly here, so let's hopefully we beat this sun gun down. I'm just sneaking on in. It is a working cattle property. Hello, moo cow. And we are going to sneak across this little creek. Oh, yeah, there's a little bit of water in it. So currently we're in stage two, which is kind of weekend warrior, your tradie, 
and we're almost at the point where you could look at doing a couple of solo trips maybe those touring trips up to three or four days really we're really running on ice and eskies at the moment so those sort of three days you can get out of trouble but uh i think we better sit down have a cold beer and have a long hard think about stage three because we we want to get this thing ready to be able to hop in and basically tackle cape york so we've just gone through the creek i know a beautiful little spot up here we're into it might even get a nice little sunset this afternoon you be up day Well, here we go. Beautiful green grass. Got to watch out for the uh, secret cow patties. How good's this? That's me swimming hole tonight. That's the bathtub. But while well, I got a little bit of light, might get this awning out, get the old trusty camp chair out. And geez, I tell you what, it's time for a, a refreshing beverage. Let's see what we can find. All right, so we told you we had the brand new the Explore Life 270 XT awning by the Bush Company. I'm pretty excited about this one, guys. I didn't want to let Dino know just how excited I was, but we've been talking about this over beers for, well, probably about four years since I've been working with Dino. I was like, imagine if we had an Explore awning. So we finally got it done, guys. Bush Company awnings, they're the best in the game. It is the strongest freestanding awning in the game. Um, not much has changed other than we've done a little bit of branding guys so we've gone to the explore life colors and this also gives you guys the option of having the sort of army green or the explore life gray so it gives you guys a pretty cool um option if you're chasing these it's a limited edition stock they are now live on the website so if you don't muck around once they're gone that may be it so let's rip into it Honestly, it's as simple as that. Where's my little logo? There she is. <laughs> it is the perfect size for the Luxie. We've got really good coverage here, which I've got a few ideas for in here too, for storage. So you've got perfect coverage for storage. And then when we sneak around the back, it's actually set a long way back. So when we open this up, you're not getting wet when you're unloading your car, your little kitchen setup. We're into it. Let's unload the truck. I absolutely love a simple setup. It is pretty simple except for the fancy go block. That's cheating a little bit, but I wanted to charge the phone tonight. So we'll pinch a sneaky little beverage. I'm pretty happy with stage two. I think, um, let me know what you think in the comments. I think I probably should have done the UHF as stage two. Um, Another thing that could possibly happen in a stage two is a roof rack, but given the fact that we've now got roof rack storage on, on the top of the canopy, I opted not to go for the roof rack as part of stage two. I think we're gonna sit here, have a cold beer and think about stage three. One thing I've just realized is I have no lights, so <laughs> I better hurry up and find some wood and get myself a fire going tonight. So we're gonna need lighting, comms, proper communication. To stay off grid longer, we're gonna need a proper dual battery system or Maybe a hard mounted go block. The ice, that's gonna go. That's all right for a weekend, but that's no good for a touring trip. So we're gonna need proper 12 volt system with a fridge, I reckon a roof rack. That's a couple of ideas I've got for stage three. Let me know in the comments, what do you guys reckon we should do for part three, stage three of the mighty Hilux Tourer. Let me know what you think of it so far. Absolutely give it to us. If you think we've done something wrong, I want to know about it. I want to know what you guys think because at the end of the day, this is going to go to one of you guys. So if you haven't registered yet, theexplodream.com.au. Grab yourself a subscription. Not only do you go in the draw to win this uh, and a bucket load of other prizes, guys, but the discounts on there, honestly, is worth far more than the subscription by any means. And then we've got exclusive merch that you can only grab from the membership. So... Jump over, check it out for your chance to win this bad boy. Till next time, get out and enjoy the Explore Life. Cheers, big ears.